Hello, my divine kings and queens. I'm back to do another video. Um, in today's message, before we talk about anything and some of the things that's been dropped on my spirit, um, I want to check in with you guys and make sure that everything is okay and let you know that you are officially able to book me for one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and I detail some of the services that I provide in the description box below and um, my website is also posted on the community board uh, so you will be able to click that link um, and check out my website and if a personal session is what you know you're seeking um, and you want a one-on-one -on -one session with me then you will be able to do that just make sure that you check out the link in the description box below of this video and also make sure that you check the community board. I post a lot of things to the community board that I may not voice or speak of in the in my videos. Also, I wanna let you know that you are able to go out and purchase a copy of my book, Reinvent Yourself is Never Too Late. The link to that is also in the description box and you will also be able to access it uh, via the community board. And so in my book, it's nothing, you know, fancy or extravagant. Um, I was just pushed to really get this out um, by the time that I graduated. So there are some things that, you know, um, may be missing from what you may see um, normally, you know, uh, in a book. But most of everything that I needed to include, uh, which is just the detailing what I've went through in my past experiences and also um, guidance and advice on what you guys can do to reinvent yourselves as well. Um, so I'll be pretty much uh, breaking down what I have included in my book and some of my messages. So stay tuned for that as well. But to access the full book, um, make sure that you click the link in the description box below and check out the community board. And so um, now today, what I wanted to detail, um, because I went through a couple of things. I know that you guys know that my graduation recently came up and so I had to deal with that. I was away with family um, on that day. And then I went and pretty much uh, spent some time with people who were close to me. So um, when I got back, you know, I was feeling really drained. Um, my energy, I felt drained. And so I knew that I had to get back home um, because my plans were to go to Miami after. But I ended up coming back home. I just didn't feel well. Um, and in those couple of days that I got back, there were a lot of overwhelming emotions that I was feeling that I knew wasn't normally me because I try to keep myself upbeat and um, in good positive energy. And so when I felt like I was being overwhelmed, I felt like it was an attack because I was saying things to myself that I wouldn't have normally said. I was feeling low, I was feeling down, like I just didn't want to continue to do what it is that I was doing. And I kept asking God, one of the things that I kept asking is, am I even on the right path? Am I even supposed to be doing what it is that I'm doing? What have I been doing all this? I just started guessing and second guessing everything and second guessing myself. And it just wasn't becoming of of, of the woman that I had worked so hard to be and also everything that I had accomplished in a short time frame, I should have been happy, but I was the complete opposite. I went through that for a couple of days, so you guys weren't seeing me. And eventually, you know, what I was hearing, you know, this had to be probably on that third day that I was feeling like this. I'm talking about I was very, feeling very negative. It was a lot of negative thoughts I was having, and I was like condemning myself a lot in a lot of areas blaming myself because I'll have a plan and I always go outside of that plan or God will drop things in my spirit on what I need to do and I always try to go uh, 
outside of him when I'm feeling a certain type of way or I try to see the good in people. And um, he always brings me back and shows me why it is he told me not to do this and what he was protecting me from. And so immediately in that third day that I was feeling down and I was ready to delete all my social media profiles, um, only person that I had really reached out to was my mother. I told her I need my space from everybody. Um, I detailed to her what I was feeling. I just, I, this was not me, you know, and I just told her and she just kept trying. She was like, Victoria, you know, you work so hard. You can't be telling this to people and leading people and you going all the way back. And I said, listen, I'm human. I know what I'm feeling, but it shouldn't be getting to me like this. All I know is when I told her I needed my space from everybody that I did, that her included, I just said, I just don't want to deal with nobody. Um, she said that she loved me. She always wanted me to win and she'll always support me and everything like that. I just told her I just need my space from everybody. Um, I felt like things didn't go the way that I wanted it to go. So long story short, in that day, I turned off all my phones, um, turned off my work computer. I turned off everything so nobody would be able to reach me. And all I did was play on my meditative music. Um, I do things that I normally do, like to just get myself grounded and balanced. I did some yoga. I uh, tried to walk jade. My energy was still off. It wasn't until I got back and I started, I cut off the meditative uh, music. I put on my gospel music. It's a certain playlist that I have. And um, one of the songs that was playing in the back was uh, from Sir, uh, Shirley Caesar. You see how I'm not my, from Shirley Caesar. And it's, um, say down, we're gonna tell your kingdom down. And for whatever the reason it's played, I put it on shuffle. Um, but that was one of the songs that um, played first when I came back in. And um, it just kept playing. It was like, Satan, we're going to tear your kingdom down. And I just started praying. And I just was asking God to really lift this negative energy up off of me. And I said, God, in no type of way am I disappointed or I'm not thankful for everything that you've done for me. I'm just asking, Father God, that you please get me up out of this negative energy. Father God, protect me from all forces of evil, negative energies, negative deities, Father God. And I kept praying. I kept praying. And I just kept saying, I'm thankful. I'm thankful. And I just kept saying, even though I'm not perfect, you chose me because you saw that I was worth it. Even though I'm not perfect, you chose me because you saw that I was worth it. Even though I'm not perfect, I just kept saying it. And as I was saying it, I felt that energy being lifted up off of me. I felt happy again, you know, and I heard in the midst of me saying this was, this is a test. This is another test. This is another test. And so I'm coming on to tell you that if any of you have been dealing with any uh, spiritual attacks that were attacking your mind and making you feel lonely, making you feel like you need to doubt what path you're on and doubt who you are and everything that you've worked so hard uh, to achieve in life. Um, I'm here to tell you that that was a spiritual attack. But God said that the more that people attack you, it's just the much more that I'm going to bless you. Hmm? I'm going to bless you in front of the same, very same people who dismissed you, who rejected you, who talks about you who is two-faced towards you. These people may not want to see you in certain lights that he's trying to place you in, may not want to see you on a pedestal, don't want to see you achieve what it is that you've achieved, don't want to recognize you for who you are, your wisdom, your tenacity, your strength, your endurance, your perseverance. Your courageous and brave spirit that you possess that a lot of people don't. But see, at the end of the day, God is going to structure this and make it work to where people, even though as much as they try to close their eyes and don't want to see you, they where God is about to take you, they ain't going to have no choice. It's like 
they're going to see it. As much as they don't want to see it, God is going to make sure that they see it. Because there was a lot of people who was trying to work behind the scenes. Like, I keep trying to tell you, y'all don't have to believe me. I took out my hair. I, I said, I'm not going to come on here until my appointment is, I couldn't get in until like next week. So I'm like, I'm not coming on here until so-and-so do my hair. And that's not until next week. When I tell you I came on here and I did what I had to do with my hair and it is what it is because the the big thing is coming on here and letting y'all know if y'all was feeling like this in the in the previous or couple of days, let me tell you something, it was a spiritual attack that was sent your way and it's so sad. But but what I'm trying to say is there was a lot of people who was working spiritually, physically, and mentally behind the scenes to ensure that you would not be where you are today. Let me tell you something. If you was doing something, you expected a certain type of accolade or recognition or reward from, from people. And you felt like for whatever it is that you did, you, you, you was looking for the noise. You wasn't hearing the noise. You get what I'm saying? Whatever noise you was looking for, you did not get because these people was trying to do everything that they could behind the scenes to ensure that you would not be there. So they wouldn't even have to worry about making noise for you or giving you accolades or giving you the recognition that you also deserve. A lot of people will group up together and see and know and feel. Don't you know they still won't say? But when it comes to certain people of whom they want to say it for, they will do it. Let me tell you something. I'm not saying that that per se is an attack. But what it is, is people showing you who they are and who they're going to get behind and who they're going to support at the end of the day. People ain't just going to hop out the wood works for you. But what God is saying is the more that they attack, the more that I'm going to bless. And where he's about to take you, trust and believe they're going to hop out of it when he gets you to where he's about to get you. But it's up to you to discern and to determine who needs to be in your energy, who needs to be up in your space, and who deserves to have a spot and a seat at your table. Because let me tell you something, there's a whole lot of people who was doing a whole lot of this and doing a whole lot of that and doing a whole lot of stuff behind the scenes. And let me tell you something, God is saying they about to take several seats. Not just one, not just two or three, several. Because at the end of the day, you get me what I'm trying to say, there are cycles that, that you had to go through and see all the shoulda, coulda, wouldas need to stop. Because let me tell you something. Had God given you what it is that you wanted to receive, or had he given you what you wanted to receive at that given point in time? Because you keep saying, oh, well, if I didn't go through this, then I would have had this. And if I would have had this, then I could have got this. And if I could have got this, I would have been on this level. And once I got that level, I would have been on this level. But now I got to do da 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 Didn't I tell you that when God bless you, it's going to be God's speed. It's gonna, you you going to see it's like you lost no time. But at the same time, what he's saying is the reason why he couldn't give you what you wanted at that given particular time was because you was not prepared for to receive those type of blessings and rewards. Why? I tell you, for every level, different levels, different devils. The greater the level, the greater the devil. And at that in, at that particular point in time, you was not ready to receive them blessings. Because let me tell you something. I keep trying to tell you. Satan sits back. He watch of whom he can seek, whom he 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 can devour. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He lurks. He is a he is always on the lookout for his next prey. He is a predator. He never gives up. He never takes a rest. He never sleeps. I keep trying to tell you. He backed off from a little bit to allow you to work up or get to where you needed to be just so he can come back again and keep knocking you and keeping you down. I keep trying to tell you. But hold on, let me get back to this. There's a whole lot that's coming to me. The greater the, the greater the level, the greater the devil. Had he given you what you wanted at, at that given point in time, God is saying you would not have been prepared for that devil that was going to come your way. You were still of the world. You still had codependencies. You still had addictions. And you was not prepared to receive those blessings at that given point in time. Had he given you what you wanted and that devil would have appeared up in your life, you wasn't going to be prepared to fight him off. But in you going through what you went through and you realizing and you seeing that angels, devils, good and evil, heaven and hell do exist. There are people who are dying and coming back to life giving their testimonies about what they saw in the afterlife. I keep trying to tell you, heaven and hell, hell exists. And people have died and saw people in agony and pain, pleading to get up out of there. Pleading, but they couldn't. Their flesh was burning. See, a lot of people think that this is a game. They look at all this and they say, oh, uh, we only have one life to live. 
They got that surface level knowledge, not that in-depth knowledge. They got that superficial ways of doing things and seeing things and mindsets. And they don't even understand when your soul leaves this earth, what you going to do? You can't take that money with you. You can't take them friends with you. You can't take that popularity with you. You can't take all the likes in the world on Instagram and Facebook and following all this type of stuff that you've attained in the world. You cannot take it with you when you die. And what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? And then you, 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 you gone and you there. And there's certain people who I'm feeling like God is trying to warn people. This is why he spared these people. And one boy in particular said that God came to him and told him it's not your time. He was scared to even tell his testimony because of what he had saw. But and God telling these people that's not their time and coming back and letting people know that no, he truly do exist and he is watching. I keep trying to tell you the greater the level, the greater the devil. You did not get what you wanted at that particular point in time because you was not ready to handle them devils that was going to come your way with those awards, with those rewards and blessings. You went through what you went through in going up against these devils in your family, these devils in your friend groups, these devils on your workplace, these devils just in general that was around you. You had to see them in order to conquer and get away from them. Do you get me what I'm saying? Because they was trying to overcome you. And they was trying to make you feel some type of way. I keep trying to tell you. A person don't always got to do things like you think. Sometimes it could just be with people having that, that spirit and that energy about them. I keep telling you people are marked. They'll all group it together and know that you are deserving of something. And sit up here and won't even give it to you. Because they're like, okay, well, if we don't, they'll, they'll put them in a certain headspace. They'll make them feel a certain type of way. Do you get me what I'm saying? You think that stuff don't exist, but it do. People got different ways of doing things. There are different doubles, different doubles, different levels. You ain't going to always have a double. That double that probably come on level 15 ain't going to be the same. The, the, the double that you're going to count is on level 5. They got different ways of doing things. But in all in all, what are they? They demonic, right? Okay, thank you. So getting back to what I was saying, um... You were not prepared for that, right? And a lot of the times uh, what happens is you, you see what it is that you need to see. And you went through what it is that you had to go through because God was trying to sh show you, like I said before, that everyone and everybody is not who they cracked up to be. You did not see it at first. You did not believe it at first, and that's okay. But I keep trying to tell you, and people trying to spiritually attack you, is to ensure that you would not get to the level that you are on right now. But God is saying the more that they attack, the more that they bless. The more that they lie, that they lie the more that he's going to expose the truth. The more that they try to uh, go against you. The more that they try to condemn you, the more that they try to group up against you, he's going to vindicate you and he's going to bring you justice. The more that they send these betrayals and, and spiritual attacks your way, the more that he's going to lift them up off of you, lift these curses up off of you, and raise you up in front of the very same people who tried to knock and curse you down. I keep trying to tell you, man, you are not the one. And God has a lot that's riding on this. This is why he backs you up the way that he do. And he's trying to show you that when you overcome these people and you get up out of these cycles, there are certain people that's not going to be able to come along with you. Even if you try, even if you plead and you beg for these people. First of all, any person who's meant to be on your level and be on your path, you wouldn't have to plead and beg with you, beg uh, uh, to them, would you? You keep trying to plead and beg with people because you want them to come along with you because of your good heart. But everybody is not meant to come along with you. A lot of people will use that to their advantage. Only come around when it benefits them. Show love as it benefits them. You do know that one-sided relationships and friendships and situationships do exist, right? Situationships are meant to be one-sided. But at the same time, it's a whole lot of you that's trying to turn a situationship into a relationship. Instead of backing away from it and loving yourself. And realizing what it is that you're going to tolerate, what you deserve, and what you don't deserve. But it's so hard in the world that people keep saying and showing different things. And there's so much temptation. And it's so hard. But like I said, what kept coming to me 
you know, he knows you're not perfect, but he chose you because you're worth it. Do you get me what I'm saying? He's not going to condemn you because you grow weary because he know everybody is not meant for this. He's not going to condemn you when when you feel like you want to get give up because he know everybody is not built for this. But in you feeling this type of way, he knows that you have the resources, the power invested within you to overcome that. Everybody don't do that. If you don't believe me, sit back and, and watch. Look at your communication. Look at your approach to things. Is everybody on your same level mentally and spiritually? So when you know him that you know that God gave you a gift, you know that he blessed you and he chose you for a reason, right? Cycles that you went through. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what I had gone through. There was a cycle and um, I realized that I realized that um, because I talked to my mom about it. I kept saying, why every time something is about to happen for me, the devil has his way of popping his head back up. You get me what I'm saying? It could be through exes. It could be through old friends that's trying to resurface back in my life. And um, the first cycle that I had gone through was back in 2018. And I detailed it in my book. At the age of um, 23 years old, I told you guys in that book, I won't say it on here. If you bought the book, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I detail how much money I had saved at that given particular, uh, at that given point in time. That was a lot of money to me to have saved at that age. You get what I'm saying? And it was because I'm very smart with my money. I was very frugal. My dad was helping me get a home and everything. And it's like, I'm not placing blame on anyone because when you heal, you don't place the blame on anybody. You accept and you own your part in the situation. You take accountability um, and you learn from that. And so at that given point in time, you know, things were set for me. And uh, one thing led to another. And so one of the things that God was trying to lead me Go sit on the chair. One of the things that God was trying to lead me to do was take a leap of faith. And in taking a leap of faith and going through everything that I had gone through, um, he know and he knew that I needed time to heal. Um, and this is why I tell you, God is with you. He's right there with you when you're praying to him. He's right there with you, wiping the tears off the floor. He's right there with you. Um, and he cried with you because... That that was devastating. That was what you went through like that. And for a lot of you, you had to go through it alone because no one around you was spiritually equipped to help you get through that. But it's so crazy how everyone would say who they are and do all this type of stuff. But it's like when the time permits itself for people to show you who they truly are, trust and believe they show you who they truly are and it's not always good. And um, a lot of you guys had to go through that alone, but God was with you. I'm talking about alone in the physical, but in the spiritual, God was right there with you, wiping the tears off the floor. He was right there standing by you, didn't even know it. You praying to him, and he's right there standing next to you. Um, taking a leap of faith for me was in that time that I really needed money um, because that money was gone. My, my, foundation, my foundation was shot, it was gone. Half of it was a lot of responsibilities I had on me. And I was begging the person at that time that was in my life that I was helping. I said, help me out, please. I can't, I got money, but you gotta help me out. Um, I can't hold it all on my own. And I tried and uh, I, I gave a warning. I remember giving a warning. I said, my money getting low. Can you please do something to where I don't have to help you out with everything? Can you, can you please? Like if it's Uber that I don't have to worry about getting you every single day to and from, and you know that I got Uber and you know I got to get my mom this, can you do something? Um, can you do something to get yourself here so I don't have to do this? And it was like at that time, um, I they took it for a joke, but now I realize now what his purpose was in my life at that given point in time. Um, my money got low and then it got to the point where I didn't have money no more. So I had to do what I had to do. <sighs> Around that time, I think the government was giving stimulus packages out and um, I also had 
my uh, refund money that I was getting and my scholarship money that I had got as well. And uh, through that, I was able to sustain myself. A lot of people didn't know. I'm exposing it now. It's already in my book. No reason for me to hide it because where I was back then is not where I am right now. Um, I remember in those days, I was eating ramen noodles like every single day. I didn't have like how I have it right now. So a lot of people will look at me and they'll say, oh, whatever, how does it feel to be this? I don't know. I don't want to comment on that, but I know how it feels to be broke. And that's why I help people. I try to be as nice as I can to people because I know where my blessings come from and I know where I was at one point in time. But I also had to be weary of that as well. I couldn't be nice to everybody. I couldn't bring everybody along with me because that drained my energy. And I realized that more so recently than I have ever in my life. And um, when I was going through that, uh, there were a lot of nights I cried. And one of the things I kept saying, I said it wasn't worth it. I didn't get what I wanted out of this. I got talked to very bad. And I, I'm the one who went through my money. I'm the one who was doing this and I got disrespected. Um, I got tossed to the side like I was nothing, like I, like I did nothing. And I cried and asked God for a miracle. He gave me a miracle. Um, it wasn't the job I wanted, but that's when I took the job at Walmart and I was making, um, went back to making an hourly wage. Um, and so I was working that job and I working that job. And one of the things about me that I tell y'all, I'm not, um, I'm not uppity. I'm not stuck up where a lot of people noticed me was because I was doing a man's job and I didn't care. I was um, lifting and working with the freights and the crates and things, and I was putting them on and I was rolling them back and I was getting them boxes. I used to cut the boxes and just lift the box up and just put it all in. And a lot of people was um, noticing me and I didn't wear nails because obviously they would break with that type of work that I was doing. The men took a liking to me because they saw uh, they was like, oh, you know, whatever, like they thought or whatever. They That's what they said. It was like, oh, she pretty, but she doing a man's job. She don't care. And my supervisor at that time made it so hard for me. She was a female. She was Jamaican. She used to be all up in my face. Like I used to try to be so nice to her. Like I used to be like, oh, whatever. Like, do you want some of my stuff? Whatever, whatever. She'll act like she don't hear me. And I swear to God, that wasn't the first time that I had encountered a type of spirit like that. Again, I'm going to come back to that. But what ended up happening, I worked the job till I couldn't work it no more. And I needed the money. Um, I was working four to one. I asked him and I begged him to move my schedule back to seven to three so that I wouldn't be eating up half of my money um, trying to take Ubers to and from work. And the co-manager at the time, he was, you know, the only one willing to work with me. And that caused me even more issues because everybody was like, Oh, who is she to get her schedule moved back? She must be doing this with him. She must be doing that. And one thing about me, I don't care what you heard about me and what I've done in the past. I've I've never mixed business with pleasure. I would never do that. This is my job. This is the way that I, I sustain myself. I don't need anybody getting their feelings involved. And then whatever, whatever happened, I'm not working there no more. So the bottom line is he helped me out and... They used to be following me to the bathroom. Like, my every move was being watched. They was watching me more so than doing their job. That's how I was. Because they was trying to find ways to have me. But the type of person I am, I'm not the type to sit up here. Like, when you go to Walmart, y'all know how it be sometimes. People be sitting up there talking. That's what they be doing. And I come there and I work. So they couldn't get me in that area. But it was just draining that, that they so ignorant like that. Like, instead of working, worrying about doing your job, you're trying to worry and catching me slip up. And I ended up just saying, God, I thank you for this, but I can't do it no more. And he was just like, you so used to just quitting on these jobs when, he's, when you encounter this. Do it right this time. Put in your two weeks. So I went to HR, put in my two weeks. And she knew what was up. She didn't believe what I had told her or whatever. 
But the first thing I came in, she was like, what's up, superstar? You just be working. And they had me working in all different departments because I work. I do my work. I bust down and stuff. I do that. And then I'd be like, okay, what's up? What else? What I got to do? They'll put me in another department. I learn quick. I put. So when people try to say and see where I am right now, you don't even know me. This is what really, it, it infuriates me because it's like, you don't even know me. You don't know me. Why don't you get to know me before you judge me and you talk about me? Because one thing about me, I'm very nice. I'm very down to earth. I don't care what job it is. I'm going to do the job if it means that securing my my financial future and and, and my stability. So um, the co-manager was like begging me not to go. And he was like, listen, I'm about to transfer to a new store. This is how bad this store was. They threw a going away party for the store manager. The co-manager, I was cool. I didn't know the store manager. The store manager didn't even show up to the celebration that they threw for him because it's when you work with just people like that, it makes it unbearable for you to want to come and show up to work your best self. And so um, he just ended up like begging me and was telling me like, listen, uh, I'm about to go to another store. You can come to this store. I'll I'll make you a supervisor. I said I'm good. This not my ending. I just I just needed the money. It's my time to go on to the next thing. I did not have another job lined up. And after I left that job, it was a couple months. It was a while before uh, my current job had called me. A lot of people didn't know. A lot of people seen me getting up and going. I was getting up, I was getting on the bus, I was going to libraries, I was doing stuff. I had to get up out the house, I had to keep myself busy. And I ended up starting this channel around that time. And I didn't know where it was gonna go. I didn't know where it was gonna lead me, but I prayed every time before I came on, I said, God, work through me and speak through me um, so I can deliver, deliver the messages to your people in the, way that, in the manner that you need me to. I said every time before I come on here. Um, so a couple months went by and um, I see now what God was trying to do, which was give me options so I would never feel stuck or tied to any type of job again like that. I dealt and put up with a lot of disrespect. Her talking to me like I'm a five-year-old on the floor because she embarrassed that I was I showed her up. And I didn't even try to show her up. It's just a situation where I'm coming, I'm doing my job, and people are like, oh, they think they so much better because well, they can't work that good. What is it that that's, you know what I'm saying? Like ignorant people, and some, you had these people in your family. It wasn't, this why I say it wasn't the first time I encountered a spirit like that, but when it's coming about like family and different things like that, I keep people at arm's length. If they ever say anything and rub me the wrong type of way, if they ever done it before, I forgive people, but I keep them at arm's length. That situation where I had to work and encounter these people like that on a daily, that was something that I really had to back up from. And so I say that to say that I had to take that leap. If you're going to, if you want God to work a miracle in your life, a lot of it includes some of it sometimes mean you have to take a leap and you have to trust that he has your best interests at heart and that he is lining things up for you. And he's lining things up for you that gradually will play out over time. Right? I wasn't looking for any monetary gains or anything like that. I really did it for, you know, I really did it when I started this. It was to, as a form of release. Sometimes releasing means coming to grips about it, uh, attacking it head on, addressing it, and then being able to talk about it so that you can help others. And so that was initially what I started this channel for. Um, it got to me doing a mix of you know, inspiration and motivational things, and it took its own path. And so what I'm trying to say is there's gonna be a lot of people that you're going to encounter that will know everything that you've worked so hard to do and accomplish in life, and they're not happy for you. They mad because you glad. They mad because you not sad, and you mad, and God say, that's just too bad. Because the more that they attack, the more I'm going to bless. The more they want you to be in loss, the more that you're going to experience gains. The more that they try to curse you, the more I'm going to bless you. And they're going to take several seats, and they're going to have no choice but to see you. Now, whether or not... They come out and they give you the recognition or the support that you want. Sometimes I keep trying to tell you a lot of it is people ain't going to give it to you on the level that you expect them to give it to you. Because these are people who put their mouth on you. Or these are people who are in secret competition with you. Or these are people who are so self-righteous and on their high horse. 
that they they feel that oh because they don't do no wrong that anyone else who do wrong they judge them and they hold them on to that forever and y'all know how that go when people mess up they they pin that to you that will forever be how people will view you no matter what you do they're gonna always resort back to what you've done in the past and hold you on to that hold you to your wrongdoing hold you to your your shortcomings You go through tests so that it turns into your testimony. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is another test that you're going through spiritually. And the devil is trying to attack you on all ends. Why? When when, when, when you have and your anointing is on a greater level, when your purpose is on a greater level, when you are on another level, this is whom God, you, you stand to threaten his kingdom and his plans the most. So those of whom he is threatened by the most, those are who, of whom he attacks the most. And he is relentless about it. But because he see that the, 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 the approach that he took before did not work, he going back to the drawing board. And now you got people who are going to come back and change the whole dynamic about themselves to try to get back in your life. Hide who they truly are and how they truly feel about you to stay up in your life. I'm saying something. You have to discern, discern. You have to discern. This is the reason why God gave you these gifts. This is the reason why He gave you the blueprint, and He gave you these lenses. These are spiritual lenses that you use while you're maneuvering through this matrix, because you can see things through those lenses that the normal eye cannot see. Do you get what I'm saying? These are spiritual lenses. These are special type of glasses that he's giving you. And he's telling you, keep these on at all times. There are things that you will see. You'll say, oh, without the lenses, the people look normal to you, right? You say, well, they can't, they would never do this behind the scenes. He say, put on them glasses. He shows you their true nature. And he's showing you, no, they are doing this. They just real calculated and conniving and very sneaky and skilled at hiding it. Yes, they are. These are the type of people who, when you fail in life, they tell you, oh, well, you know, we all go through uh, ups and downs in our life. <laughs> you know, that's just life, baby. You ain't gonna always be, uh, you know, keep your head up, big homie. You know, things gonna turn around, da 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 And then behind the scenes, you know, when you up, you see how people will come and they'll talk. They'll make that noise when you low. They'll make that noise and give you fake motivation and encouragement. But then as soon as God turn around and bless you, these are the very same people. They scrolling down the feed. They see. They see all that you scroll by. These are the type of people that will see. They won't even say nothing. But they could have so much to say when you fall down. Everybody want to come out the woodworks and act like they for you. Like they, they want to encourage you. Like they want you to be better. Like they want you to win in life. And then as soon as you actually win in life, okay, so you encourage me you, and now I'm winning. So say something now. No, they ain't got nothing to say. They mute. It's silence. Watch these people. Because some of these people are people who are doing things behind the scenes. Not wanting you to be where you are. They can accept that you ask, well, why can they accept it for other people that they can't accept it for me? I'm not, I don't know about everybody else. I don't know if everybody else, how everybody else anointing is and, and everybody else mindsets. But what I'm trying to say is if everybody else can accept someone else talking about a certain type of topic or thing or, or support someone else business or support is to support that whatever energy that they're in, they all meant to, to click up. They all dwell. They all connect for whatever the reason you don't. I tell you, that mark isolates you, but it also protects you. whole lot of people that's probably supporting those other people who can come out the woodworks and be public about it, sometimes they don't even always be real. But for whatever the reason, they don't, they, I'm feeling your enemies don't even, it don't even pay for them to be fake no more. That's that's how mad they are. They, they don't even want to fake it. They just don't want to say nothing at all to you. Do you feel what I'm saying? That goes to show you who people truly are. 
And I keep trying to tell you because people behind the scenes were doing things to ensure they would not even have to step out and congratulate you. They wouldn't even have to step out their comfort zone and recognize you. They wouldn't even have to step out from that curtain. Because behind that curtain, everybody was kiki and cackling and hee-heeing and judging. Never would they have thought that that same person they was doing it for would have been the same person that's sitting up here and being a, a, a first-generational curse breaker. Uh, sitting up here and, and moving and making, crossing major milestones. Whatever it is that you're doing, sweetheart, you're doing something that the masses aren't doing. You're doing it on a level that other people probably try and then hit it on that level. You get what I'm saying? You're doing something that, and people see you and it's like that energy that they're in, they so focused and engulfed in what you have and how you attained it and who you are as an individual. They want to be that. They want to assume your identity. They want to live your life instead of focusing on their own. You have to pray for people like that because in itself, that is a sickness. Because you should never want to be like someone else. If anything, you should take a note, maybe from that person's book, and say, okay, I'm going to be better. Healthy, healthy competition and admiration that they have. Not unhealthy to the point where they're only doing it so that they can be better. So that whatever they said about you, they would not look crazy. And I'm saying something, you be like, well, Victoria, what it is that you're saying? Don't you know some people will do the most to try to compete with you? Because whatever it is that they said behind your back, it makes them look incompetent that they can't even achieve it on that same level that you did. I'm saying something. I'm exposing it today because for a while, I wasn't even feeling like coming back on here. And I said, what is this? I didn't even feel like doing it no more. And there was a lot of things and in, in messages I, was, I said, I can't do it no more. And whatever reason I was in that energy for a couple of days, I had to fight that energy off to get back on here. And that's why I'm saying it how I'm saying it. And I'm spilling it all. They will compete with you. They will overlook you. They will be silent when it comes to you. Because behind the scenes, they were talking, they were working, they was plotting, and they was scheming. And they did it around others. So in them, in them doing it around other people, don't you know that these people saw how these people felt about you? How, how they heard how these people was talking about you? And so these people so foolishly and ignorantly went up against you, talked about you around other people. So now these people looking at your life and looking where they are. Now it don't dawn on them like, dang, I don't talk about a person who's sitting up here and being better than me. I don't talk about a person who's sitting up here who's smarter than me. I don't, so now I got, I got to do something. I got to do something with my life. But they ain't doing it because they want to do it. They doing it because of how bad they put their mouth on you. So when you achieve and you go to every level of your life, they can't even genuinely show you support and give you the recognition that you also deserve and that you work so hard for. But you ain't work hard for their recognition. You worked hard for God's recognition, did you not? Okay. So you can't let these people dictate who you are, dictate what you're going to be, and dictate the levels that you're going to go in life. Because leave it up to these people, you'll never be nothing in life. You'll be met with so much resistance and opposition and closed doors till it's crazy. But it's open door season when it comes to being on this path. Big door, little door. <laughs> Any door you open, Lord, I'm going through. Don't mind if you open up a window too. Because it's open door season. And the God that we serve is an awesome God. He is an on-time God. He is a loving God. He is a caring God. He is a nurturing God. He is a provider. He is our redeemer. He is our friend of whom we can depend. When all else fails, he'll comfort you. He'll give you the guidance. He'll give you the love that you're seeking He will give you what you need. He will bless you with the things you want. You can't see it in that moment. 
this is why you ask these questions and you feel this way. People are trying to attack you. They don't want you to continue. Now you must ask yourself, why if I'm a nobody? Why if what I'm doing is not making an impact? Do people try so hard to knock me down and knock me off my square and my A game? That is a question that God so many times has given you the answer to and you're not seeing it. Everybody's anointing is not on the same level as you. I'm gonna say it again. Everybody don't have that same level of anointing that you do. They don't have it. They're not on that same level. Somebody was to go out and do something, trying to copy you, trying to come behind you, trying to be better than you. God is showing these people in so many ways than one. Stop worrying about this person. Redirect your focus on your own life and not that of someone else's. Because you are not the same. Right? You are not the same. And so, today I needed to come on here and let you guys know about whatever it is that you was feeling, whatever it is that you felt like was going up against you and you was feeling different. You said, why am I feeling this way? People are trying to attack you, sweetheart, because they are not happy. Pray for these people because one thing that I'll never understand is some of these people, the more they watch you, the more upset they get. But why keep watching? Like they can't, it's something about you that attracts them to you where they are obsessive over you. They can't get over you, but they won't do what they need to do to get over you, to heal from you, to see past you and start looking at themselves so they can get their life back on the right track and do whatever it is that they want to do in life because they want to do it and they want to be better than themselves, not someone else. You have to understand and you have to realize that that a whole lot of people ain't going to move mountains for you like God going to move the mountains for you. A whole lot of people ain't going to be happy for you and root for you like God will. But God is trying to ask you and he's, he's asking you, is it enough if I'm, only, if I'm the only one? Will it suffice if, I, if I'm your cheerleader, if I'm your number one cheerleader, if I'm rooting for you, if I'm hollering for you, say it louder for the haters in the back. Say it louder for the haters in the back. I am somebody. I am a conqueror. I am a winner. I am a victor. I overcome. I exceed. I succeed. I excel. I elevate. I go higher and higher and higher. I lift myself. I raise myself up. You have the power within you to do this. So start doing it. Whenever those feelings and those thoughts try to overcome you, you have the ability to shake that devil off and say, you're not going to get to me today, devil. Devil, you will not have my mind. You will not have me. You will not take away my purpose. You do not have power over me. Break those thoughts. Break those spirits. Break those curses. Break those strongholds. Break those addictions. Break those codependencies. Break it, break it, break it. Loose it and release yourself from it. Because you bigger and you better than this, man. You bigger and you better than this. When you know better, you do better. You know those forces that are trying to overcome you. So you, you break it. You release it. You free yourself from it. You ask God for the strength of what you cannot do for yourself. If you cannot do it and it's too much for you, you call on his name. Say, Father, I need you now more than ever, Father. I'm growing weary. I feel weak in my spirit. Father God, 
release, loose, break away all these negative spirits, demonic forces that are trying to overcome me, they are trying to kill me, they are trying to make me doubt myself. That want me to be down, want me to be weak, want me to be doubtful. Ask him for help. And be thankful because he's telling you the more they attack, the more he's going to bless you. And they don't have no choice but to take several seats and watch what I am doing for your life. I was crying about this last night because I can feel people's energies. And when I feel it, it's almost as if I can hear what they want to say to me, but they won't say it. So I can feel it like, oh, she always think she know the answer to everything. She always got to be da 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 I can, be, I can feel it. I'll never tell the person. We just go our separate ways. But one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to be in a one-sided anything anymore. I'm not about to keep doing this. And uh, one of the things that I came across, I think it was Shekinah or whatever she said, um, she said, I don't get in fights no more. Because now I realize I got more to lose. And there's nothing to be gained in sitting up here and stooping to somebody's level when they want to bring you up out your element. I keep trying to tell you, people are trying to knock you off your square, knock you up off your A game. Why do you think that they're doing that? If you wasn't on your A game, what would there be to knock you off from? So clearly people know they ain't saying it. They ignorant for not even saying it. When They, they have every, every ability to say to you and reassure to you that they support you and that they're loyal to your cause. You need to get up out your feels about that and stop looking at who gonna stand behind you and who ain't standing behind you and who they standing behind. Because whatever it is of whom they standing behind, they ain't saying nothing about these people. But all I'm saying is you are not the same. So stop trying to put yourself in these buckets and these categories of other people and looking at how they support this one and how they're not supporting you. Stop looking at this, how, how they go against this person and they're not going against this or they're going against you and they're not going against this person. Why so many? I got to go up against so many tests and so many battles and so much fights and so many devils because this is the path that you're on. And you're setting an example for other people who are watching you, those who need to see you, those who need to hear from you. Stop worrying about these ignorant, low vibrational people and stop thinking that you got to get up out your element and stoop to their level to make them see you. Because all you will be doing is causing them to win. God has been so good to you. He's been so good to me. I can't even count the last time I ate ramen noodles. It's been so long. A lot of people will probably come across this and laugh, but I was eating that every day. And I wasn't even eating as often as I wanted to because I would still go to bed sometimes hungry, but I had to say my mind to make sure things was right. And um, it was a real tough period in my life. I can't make no tales, man. Does it mean that I... I hate the people of whom I talk about. No, these were experiences and lessons that I learned from these people. I've even gone back and I've helped some of these people. Ain't no shame in my game. I didn't tell nobody, but I did. And then I let it be like that. I didn't jump back into a relationship just because I forgave people. I ain't jumped back into no relationship just because I was willing to help people out. I know where my blessings come from. It's a lot of people of whom I help. I don't ask for no, uh, 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 for them to bless me back either. But at the same time, I'm not going to be, be taken advantage of. I refuse to be that down and broke like that again. So when people ask me why I do what I do, um, because I've been through some things that uh, really changed me. And things was never the same for me after that. Um, to each his own, everybody different. 
a lot of things I could have avoided. I take accountability. But the fact that the fact remains that I went through it and um, I learned lessons and I it was not easy. Uh, I just look back over my life and um, I'm thankful that uh, he was watching over me. Because it felt like in that time, no one really wanted to have my back because they thought I should have known better. And whether I should have known better or not, I still needed support because I had fell down and I needed people to help me. Maybe that's why I'm good off people because when I really needed people, um, they weren't there for me in that capacity that I needed them. I'm talking about I needed some serious help. I needed hugs, like I needed love. I needed, I, I, what I thought I needed though, when God stepped there for me, I realized I really didn't. And that's why I tell people I will never be the same. I've, I've had um, certain friends tell me I feel bad for you or whatever, whatever. They, they'll talk out their mouth and then it's like they get corrected because it's like don't feel bad for me because I don't roll with people. Because at the same time, tell me a time that you've gone through what I've gone through. Have you been raped? Have you been broke? As a female, I didn't have to go through some of the things I went through. But at what cost? At what cost would I have taken people to help me? Let me live with them. At what cost? A cost and a price I wasn't willing to pay. I had came too far in my life. That's what I'm saying. When people want to call me a hoe and people want to say, you have no idea. You have no idea what I had to go through and how I stayed strong when I could have sold out and I did it. So people say a whole lot of stuff about me and they don't give me my credit, but I ain't looking for it no more. Because I know who I am right now. And in my lowest moments where I could have helped, where people was willing to help me, willing to put me up in the park, but at what cost? I would have been selling myself. I wasn't going to do it. I was trying to change. And this is why I say it's so hard when you're on this path. It's so much temptation. I'm exposing what I've been through so it can help somebody. I worked making $14.50 when people was willing to let me put me up in an apartment in Brooklyn. I was making $14.50. And I had, um, at that time, they no longer my friends because I realized we was just, they weren't willing to just be a friend. So, you know, but at that time, I, they were still in my life and they were willing to put me up in an apartment. They was willing to give me, you know what I'm saying, a weekly, you know what I'm saying? They was willing to do that for me. They said, I'm not, I'm not used to seeing you like this. They know they knew me when I was what a like senior high school yeah um they wasn't used to seeing me like that I'm talking about I was looking bad um I'm not in the days I wasn't looking bad I just wasn't up on it how I you know what I'm saying so they were just like I'm willing to like do this man you don't need to be working for this this that and the third I just said I was gonna keep my job. And I was going to free myself and keep my independence. And it's not saying that I was making a whole lot of money and I was in a position to turn that down. But at the same time, I was not going to be in a position where I was going to sell myself short and allow someone to treat me like that. And I just wasn't going to do it. And I didn't sell out. So I went without. And I stayed true to who I was and what I was trying to be. I ain't saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I never have, and I never will. But what I'm not going to do is be pinned to my past. When I know there were times, like, people say what I am, I could have been that. I could have really been that in order to get through. And I wouldn't have had to go through as many struggles as I did, but I chose not to. So this is why I don't even try to listen to all that what people be saying. I don't even hang around a whole lot of people who I feel is going to be stuck in the past. I don't do it. And whoever just has that thought about me and they just never going to get outside of that to each his own. I can't make somebody look at me. I can't, I can't do it. I can't make somebody do that. And I'm not going to, not at this stage of my life. But I say that to say that um, it's not saying that being on this path, you're not going to be faced with tempt temptation. Um, 
it's how you overcome it and what you do to try to uh, fight against it and not give in to it. Um, there's so many opportunities to give in. And it does not mean temptation does not always mean lust and sex. It means what you're going to do when you're in a position where you need money, somebody willing to give it to you, but what cost are you going to give it because you need that money? Because you, you need that, that, that place to stay because you want them shoes? Because you need this, because you need that? Are you going to do it? That's giving in. It's hard, though. And it's why I tell you God will never condemn you for getting weary and getting weak at times. But he's always going to be there to make sure that you don't set yourself back. And that's why. I love the, the Lord. He My cry, yes, he did. And pity for a He heard my cries. He heard your cries. And he was crying with you. Didn't I tell you that? And he When them troubles rise and you're being met with so much drama and upheavals in your life, it's, it's so hard to not feel weak. But at the same time, you have to lay those burdens at his feet because he's there. That is what he's there for. He's there for those times that we grow weary and we get weak in spirit. He hears your cries. He pities every groan. He's there. He hears it. He knows that you're going to feel it, but you have to call on his name so that he can get you through it. I love the the Lord, he heard my, my cries, and pity
With tears streaming down my face I will call on, I'll call on his name When enemies try to go against me I know that he's going to be there for me And he ain't going to let them have their way with me No, he won't oh, oh, oh. I love my Lord, yes I do 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 he won't let my enemies, he won't let them have their way with me. He's going to block them on every end because he's my friend on whom I can depend. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. With tears streaming down my face, I'll call on, I'll call on his name. Because he won't let my enemies he won't let them have their way with me. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do, yes I do. I'll run to him when it feels like all my hope is gone. I'm going to call on his name, but I won't let that devil have his way with me. You ain't going to have no power over me. I love my Lord. Yes, I do. I love my Lord. Yes, I do. I love my Lord. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. With tears streaming down my face, I will call on. I will call on his name. One thing I see, he won't let my enemies have their way with me. He say the more they attack, the more he gonna bless. I love my Lord, yes I do. You gonna have peace, no more stress. I love my Lord, yes I do, yes I do. With tears streaming down my face, I will call on, I'm gonna call on his name. He is my friend, he is my everything. He's gonna have my back when they want me to fall, he's gonna pick up the slack. When I call, I love my Lord, yes I do, I love my Lord, yes I do, I love my Lord, yes I do, yes I do, yes I do. One thing I see, he won't let my enemies have their way with me. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes I do, yes I do. I love my Lord. Y'all overcame a lot. The people rather attack you than just genuinely be happy and support you. With tears streaming down my face, I will call on, I will call on his name. Don't even know what you've been through. Don't even know how bad them times was for you. 
fought through it. People didn't even want you to be happy, wanted you to stay broke, wanted you to stay down. And you kept asking, why would someone want all that for me? And why would I fight to make my life better? Why can't they be happy and support me? Because they was too busy behind the scenes trying to ensure that you stayed down, that you would not get up, that things would not turn around for you. But one thing I see, he won't let my enemies have their way with me. And when my back was against the wall, he is the one I call. I love my Lord, yes I do. I love my Lord, yes. With tears streaming down my face I called on, I called on his name <laughs> I love my Lord, yes I do I love my Lord. I love my Lord. Yes, I do. I love my Lord. You're going to be okay. I came on here and I fought to get back on here and I'm not going to give up. We don't know how great and how things would turn out for you if you just persevere and you keep pushing. This is why the double attack, the double attacks you so hard so that you could stop. Get away from insensitive people. Get away from people who just tolerate you. Get away from people who secretly hate you and in competition with you and get around people who genuinely gonna have your back and support you. And these people are showing you who they are on both ends. But it don't matter how many people go up against you. Don't matter if they never speak of your name in high regard. You know who you doing it for. And he recognizes you and he's proud of you. And he rooting you on. He your number one cheerleader and supporter. But it has to suffice. And that has to be enough for you. Because it's only going to get hard and more hard and harder from this day from this day forth. Do you understand me? A whole lot of people are going to keep losing people. A lot of people going to turn. A lot of people, a whole lot of people going to stop. You get what I'm saying? You, it has to be enough. That he is for you. And that he recognizes you. And it does not matter who all go up against you. Because the more they attack the more he gonna bless you. And I want you to understand that if you need a friend, you got it in me. If you need love, you got it in me. If you need inspiration, motivation, a life example, you already know you got it in me. I'm your sister, I'm your confidant. I'm that shoulder that you can lean on, I'm that listening ear that you can vent to. You know I come with that real, I am come with that fake. I keep it 100 with you, I keep it a buck with you. We ride together, we slide together. JC Gang for life. Continue to reach one and teach one and bring others to the JC Gang. And until next time, I want you to stay prayed up and be blessed. I love y'all.